The inauguration of the committee, President of the Senate, Gatula Pabio, notes the importance of the petroleum industry to the economy, but that allegations like pipeline vandalism, oil theft, illegal bunkering, among other activities, are depriving Nigeria the funds needed for development and growth. They have undermined the investor confidence, distorted market operations, and exhibited our economic challenges. It is not just a financial issue. It is a matter of national security and national sovereignty. If left unchecked, these acts of sabotage could cripple our economy and hinder our progress for generations to come. This committee would approach its work with professionalism, integrity, balance, commitment, and impartiality and work assiduously to accomplish our assignment within a reasonable time. The ad hoc committee will collaborate with agencies, industry experts and stakeholders to uncover these habitats and propose sustainable solutions. In another development, the Minister of Finance, Wale Edu, has appeared before the Committee on Finance as the Senate amends the Finance Act 2024. This is to ensure judicious use of the revenue window arising from windfall tax imposed on banks. The hearing was used as a platform to make clarifications on the proposal. All manufacturing entities in Nigeria, they declare total of 1.7 trillion losses. Fortunately for us, all these losses, it is what you have as gain in the bank and what they have done nothing about. So it's not about we are going after the profit, it's that we are recovering the losses that we have from other side of the economy. CBM provided the forex for it to be sold, all right, and returns made. And so whatever they has accrued from that money is there at the CBM. Based on profits that resulted from more or less being in the right place at the right time and all over the world, it's common that the society takes a share of such quote-unquote unearned income. Meanwhile, stakeholders at a public hearing by the Senate Committee on Labor and Employment have expressed support on the bill that seeks inclusion of domestic servants in the national minimum wage. The majority of the workers under this particular segment are in the informal sector. And then beyond that, they are mostly women. So therefore, they are vulnerable. Most of us are aware of nasty things that have happened, even either to the domestic worker or the employer of the domestic service. We recommend that the bill provides for mechanisms and measures to assure the rehabilitation and reintegration of the affected on the age unpaid and abused domestic workers into appropriate educational care or vocational programs. The bill also makes provision for the registration of domestic servants to protect both workers and employers.